are so very happy to have uh, pastors Mark and Julie Morse from all the way across the pond, as they like to say. And uh, these are just dear, dear people. We, we sat up very late on our deck talking and fellowshipping and praying and just talking about the things of God the other night on Friday. And uh, you're just in for a real treat if you've not heard uh, them speak, you're in for a real treat. So let's stand together. Let's put our hands together and welcome pastors Mark and Julie Morse. Amen. Amen. It's good to be in God's house this morning. It's good to be in Eau Claire, Wisconsin in the summertime. We've never been here. We didn't realize you had a summer. We thought that everybody was wearing coats in Eau Claire, and now I see people in T-shirts and shorts, and it throws your senses a little bit. But, um, yeah, it's all good stuff. So, you know, you know I, I could just have stayed this morning sitting there and, and watching. I say watching. You were watching the worship this morning. Do you know, if this stage didn't emanate joy... In the house of the Lord this morning, I've never been in a church that does. And, you know, just watching Hannah just worshiping the Lord with such enthusiasm. I I go to a lot of churches that have worship leaders and they're leading nobody because they're not ahead of anybody. But this morning, these guys were just worshiping whether you were coming or not. And, you know, there's something about that, that when they go into the throne room, it just draws you in like a vacuum, that you are going there as well. And so I, I thank you so much uh, for, for leading us in worship. I feel we've already had church this morning. I could pack up, just do an altar call and go home. Uh, but it's good to be, uh, God is going to do something this morning. Are you ready? Are you expectant? As, as Pastor Tom said, he got healed during worship this morning. You know, our prayer is that when you come into the presence of God, you come with expectation. Some of you are going to go home with some stuff today because you didn't expect anything different. But I believe today, if you will raise your level of faith, there is healing in the house of the Lord for you today. There's deliverance. There's freedom today. Today we celebrate Father's Day which, uh, you know, blessings to you if you're a dad or a granddad, a great granddad. And we, it's also Juneteenth, I'm told, today. And, and, you know, the sad thing about people who have been set free from slavery is when they choose to live in bondage the rest of their lives, whether, whether that's in natural slavery or physical and spiritual slavery. You have a choice today whether you walk free. The gates are open. The doors are open. And you can walk out of those gates like the prisoners had the choice in that scripture. They had a choice to walk out, but they chose to stay in, celebrating. Well, they chose for a different reason because they were in prison. But you know, we are set free today by the blood of Jesus and the word of our testimony. You know, Pastor Tom loved that testimony about Jared. Uh, you know, I, I, as I told him that, he's, I said, oh, did you know, by the way, his son, he, he, you know, Pastor Tom had just said to me, do you know, uh, Pastor Gary's son is not walking with the Lord. I said, did you know, Pastor Jared's son came out to the altar last Sunday uh, with his girlfriend, his soon-to-be wife, and they said, they came out saying, we want more of God in our lives they were there, and we, I didn't know who he was until they told me the story later on. And, he, and as I can confirm what Pastor Tom said, Jared said to me, I was away from the Lord for 10 years. And my girlfriend said, if you want to have a relationship with me, you have to have a relationship with Jesus. <laughs> Nicole herself told me that, and she said, you know, this stuff is new to me. I didn't know this stuff was available. And we were talking last week about being ambassadors of Christ and taking ground from the enemy in your sphere of influence. And, you know, she didn't only come out to the altar call once. She came out at the beginning, and then I started saying some stuff, and she came out again and brought him with her and said, you know, and I said to her, like the persistent widow who kept knocking at the door, uh, you know, and until she was let in, she said, you know, I, I came out and pr- you prayed for me for certain things, but I want more of this. I want to be able to do what you guys are doing. If, the, if it's available to you, it's available to me. That's what I said to her. I said, you know, we are not special people because we lay hands on the sick and they recover or we see miracles. That's what every Christian should be doing. 
But we've compartmentalized Christianity these days because we don't realize that the same spirit that raised Christ from the dead dwells in us. Resurrection power, not in Mark and Julie, but in you too. The spirit of God, and that's nothing to do with my sermon this morning, but hey, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Psalm 139, verse 7 to 12 says, Where the Spirit, where can I go from your spirit? I was there, I was I just wrote that scripture down on my iPad when Pastor Tom was saying about Jared. He was as far as far can be. Wow, that's far, isn't it? How far can you run from the Lord? It says, Where can I go from your spirit? Where can I flee from your presence? If I go to heavens, you are there. If I make my bed in the depth, you are there. Two, hallelujah, that we cannot run. If you have a loved one today that's running from the Lord, let me tell you they're on a futile uh, journey today because they can't hide from him. They can hide from you. They can say they don't want to hear what you have to say, but when the Lord speaks into their lives, you know, if he can close the mouths of lions, then he can open the ears of your son or your daughter or your relative today in Jesus' precious name. Thank you, Pastor Tom and Kim, for the opportunity to share with you today. My level of expectation was a little bit lower on this particular trip because I thought, Father's Day, who's going to give me the platform? You know, lots of churches, it's their opportunity to, to speak to fathers, but uh, thank you, Pastor Tom, that you would, it's an honor that you would give me the platform on Father's Day. We're we just feel honored to be here. We love you as a church and as individual people. We love Pastor Tom and Pastor Kim. And thank you for your love and your encouragement, your prayers for us, your financial support to us and our ministry. You know, without you, we could not do what we do. Every life we touch, you touch too. Because you have sown. There are those that go and there are those that send and they get the same reward. And so today, we are, we are not storing up treasures on earth. We're storing up treasures in heaven uh, that we can send it ahead of us. If, you, um, if you'd like to keep up with our information, there's um, a newsletter on the table at the back there. That we have a sign-up sheet for our newsletter. We've even got a QR code for you techie people out there. You can hold your phone up to that that QR code, and it'll take you straight up to sign up for our newsletter, you know. We're coming into the 21st century slowly, um, so if, if that's something you want to do, then great. Uh, we'd love to stay connected with you. You know, as I was sharing that testimony with Pastor Tom and Kim about Jared, and they were so excited about that because they knew the depravity of the situation, and they're like, wow, God. Go, God. The, you know, the root word of the word testimony is do it again. That's why we share testimony. We share testimony because they say, Lord, if you've done it once, you can do this again. So never be afraid to share your testimony, even when people reject it. Share your testimony and your God story. Our ministry is Kingdom Purpose International. Um, and our vision is for every believer to live unhindered as ambassadors for Christ, to thrive in their kingdom purpose. My question to you this morning is, what is hindering you in your walk with Christ? What is stopping you? What baggage are you carrying today that's stopping you from running with the Lord? You know, so many times we come into our Christian walk and things happen in our lives and, and some of them are legitimate, you know, and, and, and we've been through some stuff. Anybody been through some stuff here? I know I've been through some stuff. Uh, and sometimes you can wear that as a badge. You can wear that as like a, almost like put a backpack on and carry it around with you. Uh, Pastor Kim was sharing. We sat in for the Sunday school class and she was sharing about how sometimes, you know, that becomes your identity, and you want to you wanna tell people how bad you've had it. I don't know whether it's sympathy or, or maybe recruiting them as a friend. Uh, and, you know, they say misery loves company. And you always find miserable people will come and, and join your pity party. Um, but, you know, we, we are meant to walk unhindered. Unhindered. You know, that word, hindered is not a word that we tend to use in the UK very much. But I've heard it so many times in the States. Maybe because so many people are hindered. But Jesus wants you to walk free today. 
He wants you, the stuff that you came in concerned about, your anxieties and your fears and your concerns, your health issues, your, your bad report, your struggling finances, God wants you to leave it at the door today and, and put it at the foot of the cross and say, Lord, you have provided everything that I need. I'm going to walk free in that in Jesus' name. Uh, I know there's some of you that, that we've met this morning and don't know anything about us and watching online today. So let me just tell you a very, very brief version of a very exciting 20-year journey. Julie and I were in the business world, uh, and, and we were very successful for 20 years. And I thought that would be my life until I die. Um, uh, and I was going along, but I was going to church as well. And, you know, God was talking to me at the height of my success in the business world. And he says, what is your eternal legacy? What do you invest in your life in that, uh, that will bring eternal reward? And I, and I must admit, I was thinking, well, I was really looking at what was going to happen in retirement rather than beyond that. And the Lord challenged me. I was 36 years of age, and I was flying in business. And uh, I said to Julie, I said, the Lord's challenging me. She said, he's challenging me too. I said, what should we do? And I'm a, I'm a, I'm a bit extreme in some ways of thinking. So we did, made a radical decision to quit our careers, give God a year of our lives to see what he could do with it. Nothing, if nothing happened, we'd go back to doing what we did. Well, that was 20 years ago. And we've been on this amazing, incredible, unbelievable God adventure for 20 years where we've seen tens of thousands, hundreds, I don't know how many thousands, we'll know when we get to heaven, how many people's lives changed, transformed, just by the miracles of who God is in us. And uh, we've lived in that time on three continents, Africa, Europe, and North America. And uh, we've been to 34 nations and 43 states. And we're just excited to say that when you put your life in God's hands and say, here I am, Lord, use me, he cannot refuse but to show up in power and show up in mercy and love and grace. And today I want to encourage you that the same spirit that raised Christ from the dead not only lives in me, but he lives in you too. But you know, that he's the same yesterday, today, and forever. He's the same in my life as he can be in your life. And I want to encourage you just to be expectant for what God is doing. We're, we're currently in week two of an eight-week ministry trip. We, we recently put this map up on Facebook. We like to do this because people say to us as we travel, you're coming near me. Let, let's get together. And, and, uh, and we ask people to pray for us and pray for our route. Uh, some people always comment and say, it looks like Paul's missionary journey. I always say I didn't know he came to Eau Claire. He couldn't come, so he sent me, and he sent Julie. Uh, but you can see we're covering a fair part of the ground there. We've been in 43 states. By the end of this, uh, by, actually by the end of next week, we'll have been in 48 states. We will be in five states in the next week. <laughs> Um, and so we're excited about that because when we go to a state, we don't just sightsee. We, when people keep saying to us, have you seen this? Have you seen that? I say, no. No, we haven't seen any of that. But, you know, we've seen a lot of believers set free in the name of Jesus. Our role is not to sightsee, it's to set people free. And, and so uh, this, this next week, we're looking forward to going to a part of the country we've not been before. Because as we travel, we pray for revival. Revival is on its way. You know, you in Wisconsin has had our prayers for revival more than most because we seem to keep, keep uh, coming back here. So that's really exciting. Uh, one of the projects we're still working with is, is training 8,500 pastors and churches in Tanzania in East Africa, and we're teaching them how to send missionaries out so that they can reach their neighbors and the nations. So thank you for your support in, in that part of our ministry. And one very recent invitation that we're taking up, which in, in August we're flying to Bulgaria. Uh, Bulgaria is a former Soviet nation. At one time they were ruled by the Russians, and so they were a communist country. And so they were very restricted in how they could worship God. But, you know, people prayed and, and God changed that. And they opened the doors. They're no longer a communist country, but the churches don't send missionaries. You know, they really focused on themselves very much. And so uh, some missionary friends of ours said, will you come and help us? 
You know, I felt it was like the Apostle Paul when he had that vision of the Macedonian guy saying, will you come and help us in a dream? And then when I, I prayed about it, and then when we looked on the map where Macedonia was, it's an hour from the border of Bulgaria. And I felt it was a Macedonian cry. Well, this was a Bulgarian cry saying, will you come and help us? I mean, you know the story in the Bible of the Apostle Paul. He felt that the Holy Spirit had closed some doors, and he was opening other doors uh, for him to go to Macedonia. And so we are going to Bulgaria in August. On August the 3rd, we fly, and we're going to be there for 16 days. And, you know, I, we are believing that people in Bulgaria are going to catch the vision to reach their neighbors and the nations with the gospel. There's lots of ethnic groups there, and so please pray for us as we go and take the gospel there. Jesus said 2,000 years ago in Matthew chapter 9 and verse 37 and 38, he says, the harvest is plentiful, but the workers are few. Ask the Lord of the harvest, therefore, to send out workers into his harvest field. You know, in 2022, it's quite ironic with the COVID situation that the laborers are few in the restaurants, the laborers are few in the hotels, wherever you go, the laborers, there's a labor crisis. But you know, there's still a same labor crisis in the church. It's not that we don't have the people, they just don't have the motivation to do what the master told them to do 2,000 years ago, go into all the world and preach the gospel. I hope the Lord is speaking to you today about being part of the labor force of the kingdom of God and taking the gospel to your neighbors and the nations. Well, it's a privilege for me to have Julie uh, with me 24-7. You know, there's been times where we've needed extra grace, uh, but most of the time we're doing well. The Bible says he won't give you too much to bear, get bare. His grace is sufficient in every situation. So every day I pray for grace for Julie, that, that she doesn't have to tolerate me too much. So I'm going to ask her before, we, before I speak to you today to come and read the scriptures and greet you this morning. So Julie, Julie probably helped Tom up the steps. but uh. Yeah, I'm not as fragile as I look. <laughs> <laughs> it's so good to be back with you. Um, it's always a joy to see familiar faces when we revisit a place. And, but you're more than a familiar face. You're God's family to us. And, and that becomes more important when you're away from home. Um, I've, I haven't wished my, my son's happy Father's Day yet. They're in a different time zone, but I will. And I just want to honor all you fathers here today. You know, we girls need our father's input we need to hear that we are beautiful that we're your princess that you love us that you're there to protect us and that you are for us you know our heavenly father is the best father and I celebrate today my father although he's been with Jesus since I was 18 but he was a good man he was a good man and I know that he's with Jesus because he received Jesus before he passed and I celebrate having a good father because it gave me a good picture, a good impression of what heavenly father could look like. You know, very often if our fathers are not very kind to us, it, it will affect the way we think about our heavenly father. But he is the ultimate father. He's the ultimate parent. You know, as parents, you, you sacrifice so much for your kids. You always put them before you. It's not something that we need to be taught. It seems to be intrinsic in us. When you have a child that you put their needs before your own, on the rare occasions that doesn't happen, you know that that's not natural. And so in the same way, our Father God put our needs before his own by sending Jesus for every single one of us, that we would be fully restored into right relationship with him and that we might be all that he's calling us to be and to do the things that he's calling us to do. So I'm thankful for every one of you speaking words of truth and life and love and protection over your daughters, no matter what their age is. You know, we still need to hear it. So if you're an, an older parent with older children, don't stop. Don't stop. We still need to hear those things. We still need the affirmation of our fathers. So thank you. Thank you so much. Well, our scripture today is Matthew chapter 6, 
verses 19 to 34. Do not store up for yourselves treasures on earth where moths and vermin destroy and where thieves break in and steal. But store up for yourselves treasures in heaven where moths and vermin do not destroy and where thieves do not break in and steal. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. The eye is the lamp of the body. If your eyes are healthy, your whole body will be full of light. But if your eyes are unhealthy, your whole body will be full of darkness. If then the light within you is darkness, how great is that darkness? No one can serve two masters. Either you will hate the one and love the other, or you'll be devoted to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve both God and money. Therefore, I tell you, do not worry about your life, what you'll eat or drink, or about your body. Ladies, I'm speaking to you. Do not worry about your body or what you will wear. Is not life more than food and the body more than clothes? Look at the birds of the air. They do not sow or reap or store away in barns. And yet, your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not more, much more valuable than they? Are you not much more valuable than they? Can any one of you, by worrying, add a single hour to your life? And why do you worry about clothes? See how the flowers of the field grow. They do not labor or spin. Yet I tell you that not even Solomon in all his splendor was dressed like one of these. If that is how God clothes the grass of the field, which is here today and tomorrow is thrown into the fire, will he not much more clothe you, you of little faith? So do not worry, saying, what shall we eat? What shall we drink or what shall we wear? For the pagans run after these things. And your heavenly Father knows that you need him. But seek first his kingdom and his righteousness. And all these things will be given to you as well. Therefore, in the light of everything that's gone before, therefore, do not worry about tomorrow. For tomorrow will worry about itself. And each day has enough trouble of its own. May the Lord add his blessing to his word today. Amen. A lot of people have said they'd love to go to bed at night listening to Julie read the scriptures. Well... I've got good news for you. If you go onto our website, uh, we've actually got some devotions. There's a devotions page on there, and Julie's done some devotions on video. And you can, and that's something that we're progressing. And, you know, we don't do that just so that you can hear Julie's voice, but, but you can hear God's voice. And if it takes a British accent to make you listen to it, then God will use anything to do that. So I just encourage you in that, in Jesus' name, amen. Thank you, Julie. It's a... Uh, it's always good. You know, do not worry about tomorrow. I, I could have preached so much out of this one passage in, in Matthew chapter 6. Uh, you know, it's, a brill- it's a, just an amazing passage of Scripture. You could, you could study it for a year. Uh, um, do not store up for yourself treasures in, on earth, but do it, you know, store up for yourself treasures in heaven. I was tempted to speak on that this morning, but, you know, we're missionaries and we're always raising funds, so we didn't want to give you a fundraising story this morning. So I thought, let's go to the do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will worry about itself. Each day has enough trouble of its own. I recently heard the story of a pastor of a very large church, and, and he was suffering with anxiety. And, you know, it's a tough job being a pastor. Julie and I pastored for 10 years, and, you know, sometimes you're sitting there thinking, do I have what it takes? You know, am I the best person to lead these people? You know, when I pastored, I would have this conversation with God all the time. I'd say, are you sure you want me to do this? I wouldn't have picked me. And any time somebody affirmed that and said, I don't think you should be the pastor, I used to agree with them and say, I wouldn't have picked myself either, but God is God and not me. 
And so I'm just doing what he's called me to do. So if you have a real problem with it, go to him, because that's what I do with my life. But this particular pastor was struggling with so many things. You know, he didn't know what to preach. He didn't know what to do. Just because he had stress in his life, he was stressing about keeping the lights on and the budget of the church, and he was having such a trouble time, and the, you know, the funds in the church weren't as good as he would have liked them to be, to do all the outreach he wanted to do, and so, and so he had this brainwave, and he went to his board and his elders, and he got them together, and he said, okay, he said, I, I, I know what we're going to do in the future. He said, I'm going to employ a member of staff, and he's going to be a worrier. I'm going to employ a worrier. And they said, oh, tell us about this. He said, well, he said, I'm going to share my office with this guy. And he says, I I'm going to pay him $200,000 a year. And one of the board members gasped and he said, pastor, how can you afford to, to pay him $200,000 a year? And he said, well, that's his worry and not mine. How, how many of us would like to employ a worrier to take all the worry out of our lives. You know, the Bible says so many times, do not worry. How, 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 what can you add to your life by worrying? I was talking to a girl uh, a few months ago and praying for her. She'd come out to the altar and she said, I'm, I'm stressed about never being married. It always encourages people when Julie and I tell them that we didn't get married until we were 33. And that all, all, all often sets people free. You think, oh, there's hope for me because I'm 28 and I'm not married. And, uh, and, uh, and she says, you know, I'm really worried. I'm anxious all the time. And I said, you know, the worry and anxiety is so unattractive to the opposite sex. If you would just stop worrying about it, maybe you would be more attractive to the opposite sex. Somebody told us when we were uh, single, you know, they, they said, when you stop looking, God often brings the right person. I'm like, well, I, how do you stop looking? And it's, it's, it's all linked to that. Sometimes we can be overly conscious of situations. You know, the Lord wants to set you free from that situation. I believe that in 2022, we are seeing an epidemic of worry in this nation. I could speak of the nations of the world, but today I'm talking about the United States of America. The media is full of reasons and circumstances why you should be concerned. You know, I, I hope you're not one of these conspiracy theorists out there that keep trying to corner me and getting me to worry with them about the situation because my God will provide all my needs according to his riches in glory. It's not about the American economy. One, one of the, the blessings I've had is to live on three continents. Things you worry about in America don't exist anywhere else. You worry about things you will or will not have that other countries don't even know is a thing. And, and you know, as you travel and you realize that maybe these things are, are inbuilt in us because of our culture and because of our expectation and upbringing rather than the reality of what we should be concerned about. You know, if the news in the media is not bad enough, we're seeing friends and family members around us making choices that cause us to have great concern for them. We've already spoken about that this morning. You know, people make choices, and you think, why would they choose to do that? It, it defies logic sometimes why people choose. Now, if you've been around a while, and you know, I'm 57 years of age, so I've, I've seen some water go under the bridge, I've seen patterns in life of things happening and people adjusting themselves as a result and then it comes back around and then they're left high and dry because they made the wrong choice. You know, I won't even mention this morning about us dealing with our personal insecurities and our concerns about our health and our finance and our job and what about fear and anxiety and feeling rejected and hurt and disappointed, discouraged, overlooked, not loved. There's, there's so many things that we can worry about. There is so many things that we can overthink about and the list goes on and on. And then in this passage of Scripture, Jesus has the audacity to say, taking all these things into consideration, don't worry. 
How many times have you tried to give somebody good advice about the, how terrible the situation is, and they say, oh, don't worry about it. Just don't worry about it. You know, sometimes when I'm involved in a situation and, and somebody says, oh, just don't worry about it, I think, well, that's okay for you to say, but we, you know, we could be the ones you're holding the baby, as they say. We're the ones carrying the can. We're the ones that, that, that are going to have to pick up the pieces. And you're saying, don't worry about it. It is understandable that people who are relying on their own capabilities and believe that the outcome of their life depends on choices of other people, or even that there's some good fortune, or there's luck to play. You know, I, I've heard Christians say to me uh, something, and they'll say, touch wood. If you've done the Freedom in Christ course, you know that touching wood all day long is not going to make any difference. That wood has no effect in your life. Superstitions and these ideas and myths that we grow up with, sometimes we can cross our fingers and hope for the best. Well, there's only one cross that I want to follow, and Jesus gave his life on that cross. Thankfully, he didn't stay there, but he rose from the dead. You know, as we travel, we are seeing altars filled with people. And, you know, we used to travel a lot in Africa and other nations, and, and you sort of expect to see altars filled with desperate people. Uh, but we're seeing this in America. We're seeing as we travel in the U.S., altars filled with people saying, I need to surrender something here. And part of it is my will, that I surrender and say, Lord, you're in control of my life. We've come to a stage, and I believe where the Lord is, is orchestrating this, that we come to a place that we have to rely on God because everything else around us is failing. You know, and if you haven't come to that place where you've fully surrendered and you trust Jesus with your life, then I hope today is that day that you give Jesus that opportunity. I really feel as we travel and preach in churches around America and we talk to Christians, often in hotels or in restaurants, you know, our British accent opens the door. What are you doing here? We were asked this morning by an, an Indian doctor uh, and her daughter who were traveling, you know, and are you, are you on vacation? That's what they usually say. And I'm thinking, well, no, we're actually traveling and, and we're ministering and they have no idea sometimes what that word means. And we get to explain what we're doing. And and they always say, even when they have no relationship with Jesus, oh, how exciting. How exciting. The same that Jesus has done for us, he can do for you. You know, firstly, when a Christian doesn't know their character and doesn't know the character of God, they struggle. I really feel that, that the church in America is, is struggling with an identity crisis. I don't know, my PowerPoint this morning seems to want to be on a slow go. Uh, I, th I think it's like uh, us Christians sometimes, you know, we, God presses the button and we take a long time to respond. Uh, but I, I really believe that in America we have an identity crisis. By that I mean that the, especially the church in America doesn't know who it is anymore. There was a time where this country was built on a, on a foundation where they trusted God above anything else. And the Constitution was written uh, by godly people who decided that, you know, if God is not in this, we don't want, it, don't want it for ourselves. And yet over the years, we've seen that corrupted. And that's not only in the USA. That's in every nation where they've recognized God at one time and then drifted off from that position for some bizarre reason. You know, when a Christian doesn't know who God is anymore, they have an identity crisis with God. They don't know or believe the truth of what the Bible tells us about God and his love and his protection and his provision. You know, I know Pastor Tom does a great job and Pastor Kim of, of reminding you about the provision and protection and the love that God can bring us. Sometimes you can hear that but not receive it for yourself. Because you've never seen the love of God operating like it was meant to operate in your life. And this causes us to be overly concerned. You know, I, I, I was 
tone by telling you this part of my testimony today, but I think it's relevant. Um, so Judy and I had great careers, uh, and, and you know, I'll tell you that testimony very quickly uh, and say that you know, business was good, and, and the Lord challenged us, and I walked away from my business, and I went to Bible school. And, and, and that's the highlight. You know, that's the Facebook version. Uh, everybody puts the best foot forward on Facebook. What I very rarely say is that when I chose to walk away from my business, uh, my brother and my fa- parents were in partnership with me and chose not to have relationship with me any longer. So t- on Father's Day, you know, I can say I have, I have had no communication with my dad for 20 years through his choice and my parents' choice. Not only that, but they affected my only daughter, uh, and uh, who, who also has no relationship with me. So I didn't get a, a happy Father's Day from her today. And, and I'll be honest with you, there was a, as a period in initially where I was struggling, you know, when we, when we looked at about honoring your parents, that your day should be long, and, and about how you should be as a father. And I'm thinking, how do I reconcile that when there is no relationship, not through my choice, but through theirs? And, you, and you're in a situation where when we minister to people, Julie and I didn't learn this out of a book. We learned this out of life and going through this ourselves and coming to a place ourselves where we realize that, you know, our identity needs to be in God, in Jesus, in Christ. If our identity is in some other form, then we, when our, our, our partners or, or our parents or our children choose to make a decision that, that hurts us, then what we do is we come undone. And then we become, you know, my grandmother would say, no, you're no good to man nor beast. You know, we get to the stage where, where, where we're incapacitated by the choices of other people. And, you know, I don't want to play down traumatic situations that anybody has been through with parents or children. You know, I'm not trying to do that. I've, I've lived through that. It's a lot easier for me to tell you this testimony now than when, it, when I was going through the first few years of it. Trying to trust God, trying to move forward, and then you had this hook in you that was pulling you back saying, you know, you're a hopeless father, you're a hopeless child, how can you go forward in this? And I had to have a lot of healing, emotional healing, saying, Lord, you know, I, I believe that, that, that my daughter's going to come to Jesus at some time. Uh, she's not following the Lord currently, but I, I declare, as for me and my house, they will serve the Lord. Somebody once said to me that a praying parent is much more powerful than a present parent. Uh, And so, you know, for us, it was a case of, do you constantly keep getting rejected because you're trying to reach out? Or do you say, Lord, I'm just going to serve you. You deal with that. He cares about every detail of our lives. If you've got a child or a parent that that you are estranged from today, you know, uh, we're going to give you an opportunity to come and just get some freedom this morning from the pain, freedom from the regret or, or the hassle that that causes in your life today. But I just want to tell you today that we are a living example of someone who said, I refuse to allow other people's choices to frame my world and dictate for me how God is going to use me. We wouldn't have been in a situation where we would set so many people free if we were having a pity party about how how hopeless a child or how hopeless a, a parent we were. You know, I, I just felt that I, I threw that in. I didn't put it into my notes, but I really feel someone needed to hear that today. You know, when we understand God's character and we learn how, how much He loves us and provides everything we'll ever need, we learn to trust Him and not worry that anything can separate us from His great love for us. Julie and I have driven in the last two weeks Uh, over 2,000 miles, and uh, this trip will be 7,500-mile drive. Can you imagine what the topic of conversation is when we meet anybody? It's the gas prices. People keep saying to us, are you worried about the gas prices? You know, just because I'm analytical, you know, not because I worry about it in any way at all, you know. I I just had, I googled the gas price. I didn't even know how much the gas was a year ago. You know, the gas in, in the UK at the moment is $11 a gallon. So whatever you think your worry is today, quit. You're in a good place. 
you know, there's countries in the world that don't have cars, let alone gas. So you know, there's things to be celebrating and not be complaining about. But gas has increased by $2 a gallon since this time last year. $2 a gallon. Some of you do 10 miles a week and you're worried about the gas increasing. You know, you're not even going to know the difference. That's only a third, maybe, of a gallon, unless you have one of these big trucks that you're driving around. Well, that's, that's your burden to bear. Um, we will use, on this trip, 227 gallons of gas in eight weeks. So our travel cost will increase by $450. That's $8 per day when you break it down. Now, so let's imagine that we're sitting in Jacksonville, Florida, where our base is, and we say, oh, $8 a day increase, I'm staying home. I am not going. What, what am I saying in that statement? In that statement, I'm saying, God cannot provide me with $8 a day extra. Bear in mind, he's already providing for our car and for our meals and for our accommodation and for everything that we need, but we're saying $8 a day more is a problem to God. Let me tell you today, God's not worried about the gas prices. He's not looking at, at the economy and saying, oh my, oh my, I think the people in America is on their own right now. I think it's a little bit too much for me to come uh, and deal with this. You know, but because I trust God's word, I know that his word says he will supply all our needs according to his riches in glory. I've learned that when God orders the meal, he pays the bill. We are on kingdom business. You know, if you're a businessman working for a company uh, and, and you travel for that company, then, then, you know, you just give the company credit card or you give the travel expense to the company and they pay it. So we have the same deal with God. We say, God, if you are sending us there, it's your bill. It's your gas, it's your accommodation, it's your food, it's your bill on every situation. And on top of that, we say, not only do we want you to supply that, we want you to supply offering, because we need to be sowing. You know, this morning as the offering, sometimes when the ushers take the offering, they almost like want to walk past the speaker. And I'm like, hey, I'm sowing this morning, because I believe in sowing and reaping. We are planting a harvest into what we're believing God is going to bring the increase to. I just want to encourage you today that God sees your situation, not only personally, but in this nation. He sees the economy. He sees the government of this nation. You may be concerned about who's in the White House today. God's not fretting about who's in the White House. If you just read your Bible about when there was good leaders and when there was bad leaders and what God did. Sometimes there was a time of famine, but God always came through with a time of feasting. And today, if, you're, if your heart is drawn to what's happening in the American economy and, and the imminent crash that everybody is looking at, well, you know, I don't believe that the, the children of God should worry about a crash. I believe that we should say, what are we going to do with the increase? What are we going to do with the abundance? What are we going to do with the more than enough that God is going to supply to us? I just believe that all these things are bringing us to a point where people are going to look at the church and say, why do you have a joy in the midst of this situation? What is there? And you're going to lead them to Christ as a result. He comes to give us peace. In 2 Corinthians chapter 5 and verse 17, it says, therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. All things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. I wish I had time to, to unpack that in Christ. I know you've done the Freedom in Christ series that we introduced you to. Uh, you know, th th there's a joy in being in Christ today. Everything, are you listening? Everything that's available to Jesus today is available to you. He's not holding back on you today. Why? Because you're in Christ. If you're in Christ 
His supply is available to you. His life is available to you. Healing is available to you. Anointing is available to you. Joy is available to you today. Whatever your situation, in Christ, we have all things. Right before that verse, uh, Paul in 2 Corinthians 5, he said this in verse 14, and, and this is what I want to be the, the crux of my, of my message today. For Christ's love compels us because we are convinced that one died for all and therefore all died. And he died for all that those who live should no longer live for themselves, but for him who died for them and was raised again. Who are you living for today in June 2022? If you're living for yourself, you've got a problem. If you're living for your family, you've got a problem. But if you're living for Christ today, there is no problem that God can't overcome. In Paul's letter to the Galatians in chapter 2 and verse 20, he says this. He says, I have been crucified with Christ. I no longer live, but Christ lives in me. The life I live in the body, I live by faith in the Son of God who loves me and gave himself for me. How do you know if you've been crucified with Christ? Things don't hurt you because dead people don't feel pain. I said that this morning, uh, a, a precious couple that we sometimes stay with, I'm sorry you couldn't stay with us this week. I said, that's okay, I'm in Christ, you can't hurt me, I'm, I'm dead already. And we joked about that, but you know, that's true. We feel pain because the, our flesh is still alive. And, and we think that we have our own rights. This is a country that thinks that they have their own rights. We have no rights. We have responsibilities to be who God has called us to be in this nation at this time. I urge you today to surrender yourself fully, to commit yourself to Jesus and living in him. Matthew 16 and verse 18, Jesus said this, he said, I will build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. As we travel around America, I, I, I speak to so many Christians who I feel are in defense mode. You're defending the ground. They're saying, you know, this is a nation where the government is against Christianity, or, or this is a time where, where those who are against Christianity are lobbying so, so that Christianity will be restricted in this nation. You know, the very emphasis of that message there that Jesus is building his church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. You know, he, it's not that we should not defend against the gates of hell, but we, that we're going to prevail against it. That's because there's a movement that we are moving forward. We're not defending our position today. Why? Because we're in Christ. He has all authority. Therefore, he delegates that to us. Sometimes that's just a mind shift you know, if today you are thinking, oh, poor me, Christianity is on the down, downward slope. Oh, no, Jesus is building his church. Hell is trembling because we're coming for them. We're taking ground from the enemy in Jesus' name. What ground have you conceded to the enemy in your life? Sometimes the choices we make concedes ground to the enemy. We stop reading the Bible or we stop praying. We stop going to church. We stop doing the things that we know that we should be. We stop telling people about Jesus. And we get into this mode of survival or, or mediocrity in our Christian walk. You all know in Revelation the story there where Jesus said, I'd rather you be hot or cold because middle ground make me, makes me sick. I will spew you out of, the view, out, out of my mouth, says Jesus. You are the church of Jesus Christ. You are the church. I, I hear so many preachers these days from platforms criticizing the church in different places, or a different minister somewhere else. You know, it's so important that, that, that you go from this place of criticism in, into praying for these places. If they're not doing what you think they should be doing, then pray for them. 
you know, the majority of what they're doing is okay. It's just sometimes they do some things I think comes out of the flesh and not out of the spirit. And, and that's just human nature. This is what Jesus said about believers in Matthew chapter 10, verses 7 and 8. He sent his disciples out, and he says to them, As you go, proclaim this message. The kingdom of heaven has come near. Heal the sick, raise the dead, cleanse those who have leprosy, and drive out demons. Freely you have received, freely give. Is that the evidence of what your Christian life looks like? I was listening to a podcast thing this week, and, and somebody said there, well, you know, um, the, the apostles and the disciples, you know, we don't all have to be like them. And I'm like, what? Jesus Christ, the same yesterday, today, and forever, the same spirit that raised Christ from the dead dwells in me. Which bit of I don't need to be like them should I be listening to today? And he said, we're not all going to ha lay hands on the sick. Well, the Bible says in this verse, this is evidence that you are a believer, that you lay hands on the sick and that they recover. You know, I just want to say this today, that if you're watching online and you want to criticize my sermon or criticize my ministry, you'd better be raising the dead, healing the sick, casting out demons and taking ground from the enemy before you even question what God is doing in my life. It's time not to criticize those in front of us, but to look inward and say, Lord, am I doing what you said is available to me? I'm not trying to condemn you today. I'm trying to encourage you. We're on the brink of seeing the greatest move of God in this nation that we have ever experienced. And I believe it. time for playing church is over. Time for mediocrity, time for going through religious practice is over. There's going to become a time where you're going to have to make a choice whether you deny Christ or that you would admit to being a Christian. And if you're not walking in the power and anointing, then people are going to ridicule you. They're saying, where is your God now? Where is your God now? Well, my God is, is going to do what he wants to do in this nation, regardless of what other people. And, but how is he going to do that? He's going to do that through you and through me. You are an ambassador, a representative of heaven in your sphere of influence. You may be the only godly influence in your sphere of influence. And today I want to encourage you, God has more for you. This question came up to me as I was driving last week, and, and I've shared it with a few people. If you were on trial for being a New Testament spirit-filled Christian, would there be enough evidence to convict you? Would there be enough evidence to convict you? What jury in America would look at you and say, let's have a look. How are they doing? Are you raising the dead? Are you healing the sick? Are you walking in the anointing of the Holy Spirit? Say, no, you're okay. You're acquitted. You, you, you can go free because you're not going to be, you know, you, you don't qualify. But your God qualifies us today. His grace is sufficient for us. Jesus in John 14 and verse 12 he said this, very truly I tell you, whoever believes in me will do the works I have been doing and they will do even greater things than these because I am going to the Father. You know, as, I just want to show you this one uh, picture. Let me just flick on a little bit, if it'll go. This is in a very small church, well, one of the photos there is a very small church in Texas where, where we did an altar call and people came out the front, and, and we see this everywhere we go, it's not just there, but, but this was somewhere, somebody took a photograph, it was very often we don't get photographs of the ministry, and I love photographs because it reminds me, because sometimes, you know, the devil comes to me, and, and he says to me, there's no fruit in your ministry, sometimes he uses people to say that to me, and I think, okay, and sometimes I just got to open my phone and look back at the photographs and remind me, well, Lord, I'm not trying to take any glory, but I think you are using me to do some stuff. But I, I, I put that because the, the person took some photographs and uh, several of those people there came out with some de debilitating illnesses, one with a back situation, one with um, uh, esophagus situation going on with them, and one, one with a shoulder injury, and one with a knee problem. And God had given Julie some words, and she'd come up and said, I feel the Lord is saying today there's somebody here with a heart condition that he wants to touch. And we've had so many testimonies since we've been in these places that God touched somebody, and now they're totally healed. 
God took away something. The doctor told them, you're going to die with this situation. Uh, and they said the next day they were healed. And they said for the first time, God uh, had touched their lives and they'd found relief. I think the, the young girl there was, it was in a drug rehabilitation program. Uh, and God touched her life and set her free from addiction in what she was doing. You know, we could give you testimony after testimony of what God is doing, but I just want to encourage you today that God is going to remove anything in your life that hinders you. The, the very fact that we wrote that as our vision, that, that we would walk in a situation where we would see people walk in the fullness of God's call on their life, that is our passion you know, it grieves me when I see somebody harping on about the past. Julie often says, you know, in her messages, is a, one of her illustrations is, if you're looking at the rear view mirror all the time, you're going to crash into something in front of you. There's a windshield that God has provided that you can look forward. And I want to encourage you today that your future is going to be brighter than your past. Don't allow your past to dictate your future. God has taken away the sin. He's taken away the restriction already, and he's put up a sign, no fishing. Don't go back there and say, I was this, and I was that, and this, this restricted me before. Today is a new day, and I want to encourage you this morning as we come to an end that God is going to meet you at the altar today. When I do an altar call, I, I don't want every, ever anybody to think that I'm going to lay hands on them because I am special. I just say I am the first person to come and stand at the altar this morning. Will you stand with me this morning as we close this service in prayer? I am the first one to come and say, Lord, I rededicate my life today to you afresh. I don't want anything in my life to hinder me from the fullness of what you have planned in advance for me to do. I don't want to have to suffer with things anymore. I want to see healing in my life manifest because it's part of the covenant that we have with Jesus. By his stripes, we were healed. Not that we are going to be healed. We're already, it's already a done deal. What did you sign up for when you asked Jesus to come into your life? healing and wholeness in your body. That's yes. part of the covenant today. Sometimes we forget. Sometimes the enemy wants to say that doesn't mean you. But today I want to say if you are suffering with a sickness or an illness, if you've had a report from the doctor, God is saying to you, I'm tearing up that report. The report over your life is that by, your, by his stripes you were healed today. God is going to touch that inflammation, that back situation that's going on. God's going to touch the, that arthritis. God's going to touch diabetes today. You know, you don't have to claim this and say, my diabetes is playing me up. No, 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 it's not yours. It's from the pit of hell itself. It's part of the curse. You've stepped out of the curse, and now you're in the blessing and the wholeness of God. Maybe today you're struggling with, with it being Father's Day and you're thinking, well, I'm not a dad. Well, you know, in this day and age, people need spiritual parents. People need, you know, there's so many people that are fatherless today that needs your input in their lives. Maybe you've got some wounds from parents. Maybe you've got some wounds from children today then I, I believe there's freedom from that this morning. God is going to come and wrap his arms around you. You know, our, our prayer for you today is that God would open the windows of heaven and put a waterfall over you that washes away the pain and the memories and the anxiety that comes with those situations. Is there anybody this morning that would come and join me at the altar and say, Lord, I surrender afresh and anew today. I want my life to be an ambassador for you, Lord. I want to take ground from the enemy, first in my life and my family. I take authority today over my family's choices and decisions. And I say, as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. If that's you today, I encourage you to come and stand with me and believe that God is going to bless you today. So had the word uh, lower back pain. If there's anyone suffering with lower back pain, I know Pastor Tom received his healings. So that was another confirmation that I was actually hearing. But if you have some lower back pain, the Lord wants to touch you and heal you today. And if you're, if, you're, if that's you and you're online, you know, God can touch you right where you are. Yes, yes. But we need to receive. We need to position ourselves to receive from God. Receive your healing today. 
The other thing was kidney, and I know that's a similar area, the lower back, but if you're ha having some kidney problems, the Lord wants to touch you. He wants to heal you. He wants to set you free from kidney problems. And the third thing that I heard was the word arrhythmia, which is like an irregular heartbeat or palpitations of the heart. So they are three specific things. If you're suffering with any of those, then I really love to be praying with you and believing with you. The Lord, He is our healer, Jehovah Rapha. He, he is our healer, the ultimate physician. I don't want you to leave this place carrying out anything that you don't need to carry. I want you to be able to be free to leave it at the altar. And so in the name of Jesus, I just release your healing touch, your healing anointing over these, your children on this Father's Day, that their Heavenly Father would come and touch them. Meet them in that place of need, whether it's a, an emotional need or a physical need. Father God, you know. You know you see everything. You know them inside and out. And we just release in your presence, Lord, this fullness of joy, this everything, including healing for our physical bodies available to us this morning. And I encourage you to receive. Father God, release. We just release your healing power, your healing anointing now into all who has need of it, Lord, that we truly might be free to be and to do those things that you're calling us to do, that you've already prepared for us, you've already qualified for us to do, that we might be free to step into those things, to be who you're calling us to be, and to do those mighty things, those greater works, Lord that you said that we would do in your name and in the power and the authority of the Lord Jesus Christ. We release it now in greater measure in Jesus' mighty name. Thank you, Lord. Father, we thank you today that, Father, your word says where two are agreed on earth, it is agreed in heaven, touching anything, Lord. So today, Father, for whatever situation is going with everybody that's standing at this altar, Lord Jesus, we come in agreement with them, Lord. Addictions are broken today in Jesus' name. Restrictions and depression and discouragement is broken today in Jesus' name. Sickness and, and debilitating illness is broken today in Jesus' name. If, I just want to encourage you to raise your arms if you're able to this morning and just say, Lord, I surrender to your will and to your way today. I surrender to, to the, the, your word today says that by your stripes we are healed. Father, I walk today in health and strength and in wholeness. Father, I walk today in the anointing of the Holy Spirit. Father, I for forgive me for where I've not walked in the past, but I thank you today that today is a new day. Father, I pray, Lord Jesus, for the anointing to lay on of hands and see sick, the sick recover, Lord, for each and every person, your Lord. Father, I thank you that it's not something for the apostles. It's not something for the early disciples. It's not something for pastors and missionaries. It's for children of the King today. We all qualify because you have adopted us into your family. Everything that's available to Jesus is available to us today, Lord Jesus. So Father, we shake off complacency and mediocrity today, and we step into a new expectation, Lord. The economy is not going to concern us. Oh, Father, even as people tell us that food is increasing and there's not enough people to work and petrol and gas is, is increasing on a daily basis, and everything is going up. Father, we rejoice today that our economy is he in heaven, Lord Jesus. We thank you, Lord Jesus, that you can change things in, in our heartbeat, Lord. Lord, let us be purveyors of joy today, Lord. The joy of the Lord is our strength. Let us be the, the distributors of peace in this nation, Lord Jesus, that as the world is in chaos and turmoil, you are a God of order. We rebuke chaos today, Lord Jesus, in Eau Claire, Wisconsin. We rebuke Build chaos, Lord Jesus, in the Wisconsin, in the United States of America, Lord Jesus. Father, let the church rise at this time and be the, the hell prevailing church that you said you were building, Lord. We don't want to release anything today, Lord, of ourselves into this congregation, but we release heaven here today, God. Thank you, Lord. You didn't save us to get to heaven. 
You saved us to bring heaven to earth. This week, Lord, use each and every person that's standing at this altar or watching on live stream that surrendered to you today. Use their lives, Lord. Father, to heal the sick, to raise the dead, to cast out demons, to cleanse the leper this week, Lord Jesus, <coughs> to speak hope and joy and life into this culture that we're in, Lord Jesus. We are your children, Lord. Father, you rejoice over us. We celebrate you on Father's Day because you are a good father and you know how to give good gifts, Lord. We pray for the gifts of the Holy Spirit to be manifest in the body at Eau Claire, Lord, at this place in Bethel, Eau Claire, Father. We pray, Father, for an increase in the anointing for the gifts of the Holy Spirit, Lord. Discernment, wisdom, knowledge, healing, faith, Lord Jesus. Father, we declare them over your congregation today, Lord Jesus, an increase, an expectation, Lord, a release of anointing in this place, Lord Jesus. Oh, I just sense the Lord say the word revival over you today. Revival over you today. First of all, reviving and then revival. The Lord says to you today as a church, I'm going to sweep through this place because of the seeds that are in the ground. The harvest is coming, says the Lord. I just believe the word of the Lord to you today is look up. That's where your help comes from. It's not about the people who have left the church. It's about the people who God has said is faithful and planted in the house of the Lord. <clears throat> Thank you, Father, that you use a remnant of people to bring revival in a place, Lord. I thank you, Father. I just see a banner over you today of, re of faithfulness and loyalty to the kingdom of God. I see you not swept uh, to, away by the winds of what's coming in in the culture, but you're steadfast today. The Lord declares to you, I will use your steadfastness. Thank you, Father, for mercy and grace. I feel the Lord is just pouring into you. There's a river of mercy and grace that's just flowing in this place today. Mercy and grace, first to you, but then through you. We're in a season where mercy and grace is in short supply, but you will be a people that carry an abundance of mercy and of grace with the people around you. There's going to be a kindness that comes out of you that's supernatural, says the Lord. Thank you, Father, for your anointing and your healing touch today, Father. Father, we celebrate you today. We celebrate you today, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Father. You are a good Father, Lord Jesus. You smile down. You brood over us with singing today, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Did I see you indicate you had a kidney situation? So, Father, we just to come in agreement today that this kidney situation will be resolved in Jesus' name, Lord. Father, we declare healing and wholeness. We stand as a congregation today, Lord, and we come into agreement and we say that, Father, you have paid the price for our sickness and our disease, Lord Jesus. Father, I thank you, Lord Jesus. No weapon formed against us will prosper. Father, we cut off the root of this disease in Jesus' name and we release wholeness, wholeness and healing over this today, Lord. This is a testimony of the healing anointing of the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Father, we declare, Lord Jesus, freedom from inflammation and pain today, Lord Jesus. Freedom, Lord Jesus. Father, you, you are a God that, that created us in the first place. I just see, I just see the Lord today just, just opening, a, a, almost like opening a cupboard in heaven and, and getting a new kidney and saying, I'm just replacing it. I'm not fixing it. I'm replacing it in Jesus' name. There is an abundance of supply where this comes from, says the Lord. Father, I thank you. There's a creative miracle today, Lord Jesus. Doctors are going to be confounded, Lord Jesus, saying, is this the same kidney? No, it's not. Because there's a creative miracle from the creator of the universe of our lives today. Father, we stand in faith today, Lord Jesus. Faith, Lord Jesus, today. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Just pray your anointing on our brother and our sister today. I, th I thank you, Lord Jesus, that, God, you, you, you've given them the right name, Prince. 
because father you that their father is the king and father i just thank you today lord jesus that you brood down on them lord you look at them father and uh, with a with, with a blessing in your heart for them father today I just pray, Lord Jesus, that when they walk in, I just feel the Lord say you're walking into a season. You just stepped into a season of abundance in your life. God is saying, I'm going to turn around situations that you're concerned about because I'm going to release in you. In the same way I'm releasing healing, I'm also changing circumstances, says the Lord. Stand, stand fast today. I believe the Lord is saying, keep the ground. Don't, don't concede ground today. The enemy wants to steal, kill, and destroy, but the Lord is bringing abundance to you, and, uh, and that land is, is going to be abundant land, says the Lord. And I don't want you to concede that ground right now, no matter what reports say, says the Lord. I, I am the God that heals you. I'm the God that delivers you. I'm the God that brings blessing and pours into you, says the Lord, if you stand still and wait. Stand still and wait, says the Lord. So, Father, we thank you for the release of your anointing, Lord Jesus, over this precious couple in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Father. Thank you, God. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Father, thank you. Thank you, Father. I just see, just see the Holy Spirit just brooding over the Fetin family today. I just see that your dedication to the Lord and even as your kids come back from camp, not only attending but serving and, and the joy of seeing Hannah leading worship today. You know, my, my heart just skipped today is thinking about the pr the pride and it's, you know, pride is a sin, but, it, it, but you know, sometimes to have that joyful pride about saying thank you, Lord, for your goodness. Seeing our daughter up there worshiping the Lord. Uh, I, I just feel the Lord say to you today that, that he's just declaring his goodness over you. As a family, he's brought you through trauma. He's, he's brought you through uncertainty. He's brought you through negative reports. And, and he says, haven't I brought you for this far? Do you think I'm going to bring you this far to let you go now, says the Lord. And I just feel the Lord declaring over you today a freshness and a newness over your lives. I just believe that the Lord is just replacing. He's just wiping away all the concern and the worry that you've had in your lives. Even the concern of, of, of men medical reports and I thank you Lord Jesus that Father he, the Lord just wants to reassure you today he's got it covered he saw the end from the beginning even when others thought that it would work out one way the Lord says to you I, I'm putting a vineyard before you a vineyard before you that there's going to be so much fruit as a result of what you've sown and who you are as a couple as a family and Father we just declare over him today a newness of life Lord Jesus Father I thank you Lord Jesus you see every report and you cast it down in Jesus name and you say the report over them is that of blessing that of prosperity Lord that of abundance oh God the, the, the report over them is that of open doors and not closed doors Lord Jesus thank you father for their lives thank you father for their family what they've sown into this place lord that they're serving in the house of the lord lord father i believe the lord is saying this is a season where you will be expectant of unusual situations says the lord people are going to look at you as a family and say how did that happen to you and you're going to be quick to say it's the blessing of god because we have trusted him when others have fallen by the wayside and so father we declare over them lord supernatural grace in this season in jesus name hallelujah thank you father thank you lord jesus thank you father father i thank you for michelle today lord jesus i thank you father for the creative gifting that she is god in this church lord jesus i thank you father for 40 years of faithfulness lord of serving you in this place lord jesus i just pray lord jesus even as she walks in her newfound freedom today god i just see the lord saying to you i just slammed shut the doors of hell that was where the, the the demons of this world were screaming at you and coming after you but the lord says i have slammed shut the gates today i've torn down the walls this prison is gone in jesus name and the lord says i'm going to use you in this season and that even as i've supernaturally gifted you creatively the lord says i'm going to increase that anointing says the lord uh, that, that you're going to be used in a way that you never imagined possible your freedom is going to set others free 
that which the Lord has done for you is going to be such a testimony of God's grace and mercy that you're going to lead. I just see you leading a thousand people in a trail behind you that's finding freedom as a result of what the Lord has set you free from. So thank you, Lord Jesus, for your grace over Michelle's life at this time, Lord. I see the enemy coming saying, Michelle, don't, don't believe it, but don't, don't listen to the voice of the enemy. You know, Jesus said, my sheep know my voice. Just listen to the voice of Jesus today and say, devil, you've been defeated in my life and in everyone else's life. When, when he reminds you of your past, you remind him of his future. And you, say, you, you realize that he is a defeated foe in your life and in the world of this life, so this world. Father, I thank you for Michelle, Lord. I pray for healing and wholeness in her body right now, from the tip of her head to the tip of her toes, Lord Jesus. I pray protection on her heart right now, Jesus. I pray, Father, that you will surround her, Lord Jesus, encamp around her on a daily basis, Lord, that you will use that anointing in her life, Father, to set the captive free, God. You're gonna give, I just see the Lord giving you blueprints, blueprints of heaven for, for the way to help people and the Lord is saying I'm just going to download to you just pictures of things you're going to paint pictures you're going to draw things you're, you're going to design things and, you, and people are going to say Michelle where did that come from that's a new level and you say that's the level of heaven that's been released because hell has been removed thank you Father that doubt has been removed discouragement has been removed Father that Father this is a day this is Michelle's day Lord this is Michelle's day. I just feel the Lord say to you, this is the day, Michelle. You've stepped into a new sphere today, says the Lord. And he wants to use that to, to increase the anointing that is on your life in Jesus' name. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Father. Can I, can I just get, ask Andy and your family to come? I just feel a sense the Lord is saying, you know, they, they represent a, a Christian academy. Uh, and, and, and it's not just education, but I just feel the Lord is, I just feel a sense of the Lord saying that there's going to be a, a, an explosion of what God is doing. It's, it's, I, I could just see this, I, almost like the Lord is lighting a, a fuse of dynamite that, that's going to affect a, a bigger sphere of influence than you ever imagined. That even as you've come and questioned, quite rightly questioned, oh Lord, we're in this small place really. Uh, and I feel the Lord say to you, and I want you to agree with, with me on this, because you know the enemy wants to restrict you. He wants to, to take ground from you, but not only from you, but from everyone else that he's called you to influence. But I just feel the Lord is saying that you're coming into a season, says the Lord, where your patience uh, 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 will pay off. Your patience will pay off. And even as you, 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 I just see the Lord just stripping away disappointment and discouragement and questioning in your hearts and your lives. And says, the Lord says, my ways are not your ways. I, I know there's a better plan, but it's never better than my plan, says the Lord. I just feel the Lord say to you today, uh, as you're planted and as you're firm and as you're committed to what he's doing, in, in the same way uh, as Jared, who was 10 years in the wilderness, somebody, he, he, he married, you know, he's getting married to an atheist who leads him to Christ. You couldn't have planned that out in your life, or neither could I. But God says, I, I have things behind the scenes that I've been waiting to release, but you've not been ready to receive them, says the Lord. So just, just hold, stretch your hands out towards this precious family who represent Bethel Christian Academy. And so, Father, we thank you, Lord Jesus, for the lives that are going to be transformed. I just see, a, a, I just see thousands upon thousands of people in heaven who, who, as a result, not only of people that they have taught, Lord Jesus, but people who, who have been influenced by the people they've taught. And so, Father, I thank you. You're increasing their influence. I just see a banner of influence over you today, says the Lord. That even as you have laid down dreams, even as you have laid down opportunities, the Lord says to you, I am going to increase you exponentially, says the Lord. You're going to have more eternal impact than you ever thought possible in the name of Jesus. 
Jesus. So, Father, we just declare healing and wholeness and strength in their lives, Lord Jesus, for them and their family, God. I just thank you, Father, that hindrances are being removed in their lives today, Lord. I thank you, Lord Jesus, for the anointing of your Holy Spirit over them as a couple, Lord, as in a family. I thank you for their faithfulness to your house, Lord Jesus. Father, I just pray, Lord Jesus, that, that they step in. I, I just see a sense today there's a choice before you. There's a choice before you. You can, you can walk in your own strength, just trust in the Lord occasionally. Or the Lord is saying, I just want you to step over the line and say, Lord, we're abandoned. We're abandoned to your mercy. Father, if you don't show up, we've got a problem. And I just feel the Lord say to you today, I'm already there waiting, says the Lord. My arms are open. Just dive like, like a child today on Father's Day who was in a swimming pool. And the, and the father saying, jump off the side. And the little child thinking, will I drown? No, the father will catch you today. The father will catch you today. His arms are strong. And he just wants to embrace you as a couple and as a family. So, Father, we declare over them today abundance. Abundance of blessing. Hold on, says the Lord. Abundance is coming. Hold on, says the Lord. Provision is coming. I, I, I just see you sitting at the desk, both of you, uh, with Pastor Tom and Kim and saying, we've, we've got a problem. We've got so much funds coming into the school. We don't know what to do with them. I just feel the Lord saying that, that, that Lord, I, we, we just don't know what to do. It's, it's a dilemma that we've got. And the Lord is saying, be, you just keep sowing. Just keep sowing, says the Lord, because harvest comes from heaven and not through your education or your experience or the opportunities around you, but harvest comes from heaven. And so, Father, we declare that in Jesus' name. And everyone said, Amen, Amen, Amen. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you. Perhaps we could just finish with the song, Kim, and just... Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for your grace and your mercy. You said it, and I believe it. You said it, it is done. You said it, I believe it. You said it, it is done. You so thankful that the Morrisons have come today and they are willing to pray with anyone. Uh, if you want to stay here and have prayer from Pastor Julie, from Pastor Mark, they are more than willing. And, uh, you know, the Lord is passing by. If you don't know, I mean, the Lord is passing by here and receive that touch. Uh, so so they are more than willing to pray. Let's, let's close. I'm going to ask uh, us to pray for the Morrisons. And uh, Pastor Kim and I, or maybe it'll just be me at the door. Um, but uh, if you want prayer, by all means. And then I, I also just want to make a final announcement. We're going to make the final push for this uh, building project. The guys that have been working, let's come on out for this final push this week. And let's, let's stay, let's roll up our sleeves, and uh, let's go after it. So, Father, in the name of Jesus. Thank you for your choice servants, Lord, for pastors Mark and Julie who have journeyed this way today, Lord. On Father's Day, not an accident, your divine purpose, Lord, your divine plans. And we pray your blessings, the blessings of the Lord that make rich and add no sorrow to be upon their lives, Lord God, that you would open up doors for them that 
no man could close doors of ministry to saints and to sinners as well, whether it's the doctor at the hotel, Lord, or if it's at a gas station or wherever it would be. Lord, we pray for the increased anointing upon their lives, Lord, a fresh wind, a fresh fire, an increased uh, fire, Lord, a, an increased wind in their lives, walking in wisdom and discernment and revelation, Lord, signs and wonders and miracles following, Lord God, that you would stretch forth your hand to heal. And we pray that even today, Lord, as a minister, Lord, amongst us, Lord, that the anointing that, that, that is powerful, that is strong, that anointing would rest upon them in an increased way. Father, we thank you for pastors Mark and Julie, Lord, for that ministry. And we pray that in these remaining six weeks of their journey, Lord God, that you'll go before them in unprecedented ways, Lord God, and that you'll give them favor where they go, that they'll be business people and, and, and governmental leaders even, uh, commerce people that they'll have contact with, Lord, to impact, and thus those people to have impact into their lives and ministry as well. We just pray for partnerships, Lord God, that as they journey on this trip here, Lord, that there would be partnerships uh, with various, again, just businesses or or uh, just, just people and the right people in the right places, Lord, that can partner with, that can sow into their ministry, that can be a mouthpiece for their ministry. Go before them and prepare the way, your divine protection upon them. Lord, I thank you for this great body of believers, Lord. Thank you for each one that's here today, and I pray your blessings upon them. Holy Spirit, rest upon them in a mighty, mighty way. We ask in this in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Again, if you want to stay and pray, more so far.